Sometimes in pop culture, you come across two celebrities who look so alike, you have to wonder if they're not secretly twins. Just take Jesse Eisenberg and Michael Cera if you want an example of this. And as it happens, the wrestling world is no stranger to such a phenomenon either. No, over the years, countless strangely similar looking figures have sprung up. But who are the biggest examples of this? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. So join us as we take a deep dive into doppelgangers, wrestlers who look alike. And if we're starting anywhere with this subject, where better to do so than with an example which was a popular discussion point for kids everywhere on late 90s playgrounds. And that was the fact that Steve Austin and Bill Goldberg were basically the WWF and WCW versions of each other. Sure, Austin was a brawler whose character was more of a hard drinking man of the people than anything else, and Goldberg was far more of a star athlete powerhouse who mowed through everyone in his path by comparison. But on a physical basis alone, the two are almost identical at a glance. After all, they were both around the same size, with the rattlesnake being billed at 6 foot 2 and 252 pounds, and the former WCW World Heavyweight Champion meeting him at 6 foot 4, 285 pounds. On top of that, they both stood out from the pack on account of their shaved heads and goatee beards, as well as the fact that they each wore plain black ring gear. Then you also have to take into account the reality that they were the star attraction of their respective promotions at the same time, with Austin dominating the conversation in New York, all while Bill was holding down the fort in Atlanta. So really, it's enough to make someone wonder if it wasn't designed this way, and as it happens, if you believe that to be a fact, then you wouldn't be far from the truth. Yes, many important behind-the-scenes figures at WCW, including once Booker Kevin Sullivan, have since gone on record as saying the decision to push Goldberg to the moon in 1998 was no coincidence. And that was because, with the Rattlesnake being so popular on the other channel, the hope was that fans would tune into the Southern Wrestling promotion, catch sight of a similar bald goateed main eventer, and then decide to keep watching for a while. Not that this suggests the only reason the Tulsa native was picked for the role was because of his similarity to his Texas-born peer, of course. No, Bill was a hugely charismatic guy in his own right, and so when fans did tune in, they usually stuck around for the long haul on account of how magnetic a figure he was. And this is exactly why the schoolyards of the world during the turn of the millennium period were filled with conversations about who was the better of the two, with some arguing for Austin and others insisting it was Goldberg instead. Hell, maybe one day those kids thought at the time we'd even get to see the two face off in the ring together so the argument could be settled once and for all. Unfortunately, though, they missed out on such an eventuality by one day in the end, because it wasn't until the March 31st, 2003 episode of Raw, the very night after Stone Cold retired at WrestleMania 19, that Bill made his WWE debut. That's right, it was the cruelest of all fates to have this taken away from us after such a close call. But it wasn't as if there weren't other matches between wrestling doppelgangers to fill its place. No, years before this in fact, in 1994 New Generation era WWF, two incredibly similar figures were going at it when The Undertaker took on Brian Lee. But wait, let's backtrack for a second because for those who aren't familiar with the name Brian Lee, well they might be more familiar with his character of Chains instead, one fourth of the Attitude Era stable Disciples of Apocalypse. Still not ringing any bells? Well, how about the time when, after the dead man was apparently killed off at the 1994 Royal Rumble, a fake Undertaker began appearing on WWF TV a few months later, managed by Ted DiBiase. Yes, as a real-life friend of Mark Calloway and someone who looked pretty similar to him, it only made sense that when the company were looking for someone to play this doppelganger version of the Phenom, they chose Brian Lee for the job. So when he first started appearing on TV that summer, at first, many fans were fooled. Of course, as time went on though, it became clear that he was actually an imposter, because for as much as he looked like his friend, Lee wasn't quite able to get the mannerisms of the gimmick down in the same way. And this meant that fans soon began asking where the real Undertaker was once more, a question which would ultimately be answered when he returned at that year's SummerSlam to take on and defeat his pretender. Sure, the match between the two here might have sucked harder than a supercharged Dyson, but getting a 5-star classic was never really the point in the first place. No, the point was evidently to get that visual of the two standing face to face, showing just how similar they looked in the process. But what happens when wrestlers who look alike don't get a chance to share the ring together because they don't even come from the same era? 
Well, if you want an example of this, you only have to look to the comparisons which are always being made between Mr. Perfect and Dolph Ziggler. Even to this day, in fact, almost two decades into his career, Ziggler still seems to live in the shadow of a man he never actually worked with. And while you could argue this is unfair as Kurt Hennig left unreasonably big shoes behind in his wake, it's also a compliment in a way as it shows how much respect people have for the show-off's work. After all, Hennig was one of the greatest in-ring workers of all time, a man who could be plucked right out of the 80s and placed into the modern day, with him still being better than half the people on any given roster. So for someone to put Dolph in the same category as this then is a testament to just how good he really is. And it's not an incorrect comparison either, as the two have a very similar style, one which focuses on high work rate, flashy yet crisp maneuvers, and the ability to bump like an absolute boss. On top of that, they also look remarkably alike, a fact which has been pointed out by numerous people over the years. Yes, with their matching bleached blonde hair and similar physiques, at a glance, Ziggler could almost be mistaken for the son of Henning. Does this make it ironic that the show-off has shared the ring with Mr. Perfect's actual son, Curtis Axel, on a number of occasions? Yes, and we're sure they had a good laugh about this behind the scenes, too. But they're likely not the only people who've had a laugh about their similar appearances in recent years, as the WWE Women's Division currently features two stars who could easily play the role of sisters. Who are we talking about here? Why, Alexa Bliss and Liv Morgan, of course. Need any evidence that this is the case? Just take a look at them. If you do that, then you'll see that with their long blonde hair and alternative style, they're pretty much the same person in the right light. Yes, there are differences, but not many, because with both being on the shorter side at 5'1 and 5'3 respectively, and both having similar styles in the ring, it would be easy to confuse the two if you were channel flipping. And even if you did stay tuned in after that, it might still be a little confusing for the uninitiated as the pair have had pretty similar characters at points in their careers too, with Bliss often playing the bratty mean girl and Morgan usually playing a similarly pixie-esque figure, albeit one on the babyface side of the equation. Hell, in recent months, there has even been speculation that the two will eventually end up in a stable together, as with Liv seeming to have gained more of a dark edge, it was at one point rumored that she was being set up to join Bray Wyatt's new group. Of course, if she does that then, it would only make sense Alexa would join her as well, as she already has a standing relationship with Wyatt, one which Bliss would no doubt be looking to exploit upon his return to action. One person Bray will sadly no longer be able to add to his ranks, however, is his former friend and stablemate Brody Lee. And that's because Lee tragically died in December of 2020. Prior to this, though, he was a beloved figure in both WWE and AEW, in large part because of how much he felt like a modern-day incarnation of Bruiser Brody. That's right, with his ragged long hair, worn down looking vest and jeans, and brawling in-ring style, Brody Lee was getting comparisons to the Territory star as far back as his early days in the industry when he worked for the likes of Chikara. And these comparisons would only gain more traction once he went to New York and was renamed Luke Harper, as there, with a bigger audience than ever now watching him, more eyes were opened up to the similarity between the two figures. After all, back in the 80s, Frank Goodish was one of the most feared men on the territory circuit for a reason, and that was because of his no-nonsense in-ring style. And this was certainly a style which was aped by his more modern counterpart during the 2010s, so much so that it felt like it had to be purposeful. In fact, many people to this day still believe the name Brody Lee was a deliberate tribute to Bruiser, though in actuality, this wasn't the case. No, while well, John Huber, the man behind the gimmick, was certainly a fan of the old school star, his name actually came from a combination of his favorite movie character, Brody Bruce from Mallrats, and the actor who played that role, Jason Lee. Still, it's easy to see why people were confused by this. As the two looked and acted so similar in the ring, it often made fans wonder why Luke Harper wasn't getting pushed more during his time in WWE. And sadly, there would be one final comparison between the two as they both died before their time. With Brody Lee passing away as a result of an unspecified illness not long after signing with AEW at the age of 41, and Bruiser Brody being murdered in a backstage brawl in Puerto Rico back in 1988 when he was just 42. Yes, sometimes even in death, two people can show similarities. But even if they both left us tragically, their legacies continue to live on as they serve as inspirations for those who came after them.
Of course, there are still many living examples of inspirations in wrestling, and given how big of a deal Trish Stratus was in paving the way for every WWE women's wrestler after her, it's hard not to believe some of her work helped to inspire her own modern doppelganger, Mandy Rose. That's right, there are a lot of similarities between Rose and Stratus, as aside from looking very similar with their model physiques and dyed blonde hair, they actually had almost identical paths when it came to getting into the industry. But what were these dual paths? Well, as their looks suggest, they both got their start working as fitness models, with them taking part in various competitions during their youth and usually scoring well. Then, when the world of pro wrestling came knocking, they each had to start off at the bottom, basically playing the role of the beautiful blonde, someone who wasn't exactly expected to be a star worker in the ring. That said, in the case of Trish, she would eventually blow away all expectations anyone had for her by becoming a very good wrestler, one who stood out in an era where women's wrestling wasn't exactly a focus. And as for her modern-day counterpart, well, while she never quite reached that level in the ring, she did also show a lot of improvement over the years. So much so that when she was tasked with helping to rebuild NXT during its 2.0 era by adding some star power to its women's division, she did this with ease by serving as their women's champion for 413 days. Unfortunately though, since then she's parted ways with the company and that means even if Stratus is now back in the picture, it's unlikely we'll be getting the showdown between the pair anytime soon. Not that this should hurt Mandy too much though, because in another similarity the two share, she's shown herself to be something of an entrepreneur outside the industry. Yes, well, Trish managed to make a lot of money in yoga after her first spell in New York ended, Mandy Rose has been able to do the same on her fan site. So is there still the outside possibility that the two will ever share the same ring one day? Who knows? You can never say never in the wrestling industry. That is, unless one of the people you're talking about has sadly passed on, of course, which is exactly the reason we'll never get to see Elias and Randy Savage go one-on-one. -on -one. If we did, though, it would surely be a sight, as the two looked very similar to one another on the face of things. Sure, no one is going to confuse their work as wrestlers, because the Macho Man was one of the greatest of all time, and the Drifter, well, he's more mid-card if we're being honest. But on physical appearance alone, it's like looking at a mirror image. And that's because with their dual shaggy beards and long hair, combined with their muscular physiques, it would be easy to confuse the two at a glance. In fact, given the more comedic nature of Elias's character, we're honestly surprised he hasn't played this up more over the years, perhaps by even dressing up as Savage in order to gain some heel heat from fans. It would certainly be a memorable moment as all he'd really have to do to complete the look would be to put on some skiing goggles and a robe. Maybe the reason it hasn't happened then is because, even if he is in the Hall of Fame now, the Macho Man's name is still rarely brought up on TV, likely due to the beef he had with Vince McMahon following his exit from the company in 1994, the reasons for which are still hazy to this day. But none of that changes the fact that it would still be an effective moment if they did it. Hell, Elias isn't exactly a stranger to playing other characters anyway, as he's already given us his portrayal of his twin brother Ezekiel in recent years. So if he were to bust out his guitar and sing a gravelly voiced song about being the cream of the crop, we'd be down for it. Really, if nothing else, it would serve as a perfect Halloween costume for him. Of course, not every wrestler can be so easily mimicked, however, as they're not as much of a live-action cartoon as the Macho Man was. But in a way, that somehow makes it even eerier to look at our next example, because while Batista is certainly a one-of-a-kind in the wrestling industry, he looks a bit more like a regular human, as does his Welsh counterpart, Mason Ryan. Forgotten who Mason Ryan is? We wouldn't blame you if you did, because in truth, he wasn't around for very long. Hell, he was only on the main roster for a year in 2011, with the rest of his time under the WWE banner either being spent down in Florida Championship Wrestling or NXT. Still, during that brief period where he was on Raw as part of the new Nexus, fans everywhere were struck by just how much he looked like one of their favorites from recent history. And that's because with his bodybuilder physique and his almost identical facial features, the big man was a dead ringer for the animal. So much so, in fact, that it became clear after a while Vince McMahon was hoping the rookie would be his next big powerhouse star, which was exactly why he paired him with CM Punk and put him under his learning tree. Unfortunately though, once the voice of the voiceless dropped his now famous pipe bomb and kickstarted the second summer of punk, the new Nexus were left in the dirt, and as a result, Mason Ryan would go forgotten. But had things been different, who knows how high he could have risen? 
because there was certainly a place for someone with his physique in the main event scene if he'd been allowed to develop enough as a performer. And it wasn't as if he had to be a particularly great in-ring wrestler for this either, because let's be honest, for as entertaining as Big Dave is, his talent was never in his mat work. No, he managed to get himself over on charisma and personality, the very same features which made him a Hollywood star in the years following. But did Mason Ryan have this same level of personality in him? We guess we'll never know at this point because sadly he appears to have retired from the industry altogether and instead started working with Cirque du Soleil as an archer. Somewhere off in a parallel universe, however, Colin Mockery Punk never cut his pipe bomb and instead he stayed by the Welshman's side, allowing him to grow to the point he could break out just as Batista had in the lead up to WrestleMania 21. And if we're all being honest, who wouldn't want to see that? Ryan giving the Second City Saint the thumbs down and then powerbombing him through a table. If nothing else, it would have been like watching a glitch in the Matrix, as it would have been hard to tell which scene was which. That or the Triple H version in 2005. But one set of doppelgangers that are easier to tell the difference between are our next two subjects. Why is that? Well, while John Cena and Darren Young look very similar, there's one obvious difference between them. Yes, just look at a picture of Big Match John and the former primetime player and tell us they don't look almost identical, obvious differences in skin color aside. Seriously, while this one might not be apparent at first glance, once you notice it, it's hard not to see it every time you look thereafter. Really, their faces are almost identical, and while their physiques aren't a one-to-one -one match, it's not like they're a million miles apart from each other in that respect either. And given the fact that they're both billed as being the exact same height, 6 foot 1, it makes the similarities all the more striking. Hell, even Young himself has acknowledged the likeness between the two in playful Twitter posts over the years. And with him now serving as a star attraction of the NWA, he's been able to mimic Cena even further in the sense that he's now become a main event player himself. That said, if he wants to fully reach the level of the champ, he has a ways to go yet, as John has now mostly left wrestling behind in order to start a career in Hollywood. But this also means that if he's ever looking for someone to play his brother from another mother in a slapstick comedy movie, Fred Rosser will always be there, ready to fill the role if necessary. When it comes to our next two subjects of the day though, they don't need to play brothers on screen in order to highlight their similarities because they actually are siblings as it turns out. Yes, that's right, we're talking about Jimmy and Jay Uso. Now, we know this one is technically cheating as the Usos are legitimate identical twins, so it's pretty obvious they look alike, but that doesn't mean they don't qualify for this list, because like with other twin tag team acts such as the Bellas, they've been able to use this in storyline over the years. How have they done so? Well, sometimes it's been through a bit of in-ring twin magic, something used in order to help them get a screwy win. And when it hasn't been used for the purposes of scoring a victory, the doppelganger nature of the pair has been used to play up storylines as well. Take for example the time when Jay had his main event run against Roman Reigns in the autumn of 2020. Sure, it could have been hard to believe the perennial tag team star as being a big time singles player all of a sudden, but over the course of one promo where he memorably talked about how people always ask him, which one are you? He was able to feel like a true top babyface in record time. Of course, once Jimmy came back from injury though, the pair would return to being a tag team act, even if they've now shown that they do have it in them to go solo, they still clearly work better as a unit. And that's because they've been a unit for all their lives, right back to their childhood when they were being raised by their real life father, Rikishi. Yes, they'll always have a bit of twin magic to fall back on if they need to pick up a win on short notice. And, like every other pair we've discussed today, they'll continue to draw comparisons from fans.